Welcome back to another episode of Truth is Treason TV. I am your host, Kevin Hayden. And today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about alternative currencies and the role that they play in bartering and personal freedom. Um, bartering is simply the exchange of goods or services between two people where, where each party is better off than before. It's, it's a simple contract or exchange. And this, this could involve anything. This happens in countless, uh, countless ways every single day. So um, let's get into some of these currencies and one in particular, the Liberty Dollar. Enjoy. Regardless of your political leanings, the Federal Reserve is the common denominator in all of our lives. The Fed is a private bank that in 1913 was given the power to control our money supply under the guise of preventing economic collapse. Since you and I have no say in what happens on Capitol Hill, we are forced to look for alternatives to protect our own earnings from inflation, excessive taxation, or even a dollar collapse. This is where the power of bartering with alternate forms of currency proves most useful. Dave Gilly, owner of Gilly's Coney Island Restaurant in Genesee County's Genesee Township, also accepts silver, gold, copper, and other precious metals to pay for food. He says if he wanted to, he could accept marbles. Do people have to accept dollars or money? No, they don't. They can accept anything they want or they can refuse to accept them. He's absolutely right. The U.S. Treasury Department says the Coinage Act of 1965 says private businesses are free to develop their own policies on whether or not to accept cash unless there is a state law which says otherwise. That'll in the past, people have exchanged livestock for paper goods or handmade clothing for dental services. And perhaps, as far-fetched as this may sound, people actually exchange their time and manual labor for money. This would include gold and silver coins, precious gems, or anything that held intrinsic value. And so across the nation, alternative forms of currency are popping up. Ithaca Hours in New York, Bitcoin across the Internet, and Berkshires in Massachusetts. One notable effort to introduce an alternative currency was spearheaded by an eccentric mint master from Hawaii named Bernard von Nothaus. He called his project the Liberty Dollar, and it centered on privately minted gold and silver rounds, as well as paper certificates. These certificates were essentially a warehouse storage receipt, giving the bearer a right to claim a certain amount of gold or silver at the Liberty Dollar headquarters. This is almost identical to the origins of paper money as we know it today. In an old tale about a goldsmith, citizens would place their precious metals in his vault, and in exchange he would give them a paper receipt. These receipts began circulating through the local marketplace and were considered as good as gold. People could then take their receipt back to the goldsmith and give them claim to a certain amount of gold or silver. If you look at older U.S. dollar bills, you'll notice that they had the phrase silver certificate printed at the bottom, and when taken to a bank, they were redeemable, in silver upon demand. Bernard von Nothaus's idea revolved around this same notion and could do so without accruing massive debt and interest, unlike the Federal Reserve System that we currently have. Furthermore, his project and those like it could return the power of the economy back to the free market. As for Mr. Nothaus and the Liberty Dollar Project, it all came crashing down in 2007 when federal agents raided his office and warehouse. His crime? The Secret Service claimed that his privately minted rounds were in violation of federal law and represented a counterfeit currency. Agents seized over 4,000 pounds of his commemorative Ron Paul coins and even his famed decorative Hawaiian medallions as contraband. They also made sure to take over a quarter million dollars worth of pure silver and gold. Class action lawsuits have been of little merit or use in returning people's hard-earned investments in precious metals that were stored at the warehouse. So once again, the federal government uses heavy-handed mob tactics to eliminate competition to the private Federal Reserve. The United States Attorney General's Office delivered a very clear message following the conviction of Bernard von Nothaus. Attempts to undermine the legitimate currency of this country are simply a unique form of domestic terrorism. While these forms of anti-government activities do not involve violence, they are every bit as insidious and represent a clear and present danger to the economic stability of this country. Well, clearly the Justice Department feels that the private and voluntary trade of gold and silver 
is an attempt by terrorists to undermine the U.S. dollar. It's an interesting choice of word, undermine. Uh, according to Webster, means to erode the base or foundation of something, uh, to damage or weaken, especially gradually. Now, that sounds a lot more like quantitative easing to me. Uh, ben Bernanke, the head of the Federal Reserve, has created trillions upon trillions of dollars um, out of thin air. The keystrokes, um, and he sends you know half a billion dollars to foreign banks and then refuses to name them in front of Congress. Acts like these uh, seem to be the work of a terrorist or an insidious act, as the, the Department of Justice called it. Um, this is something that undermines the credibility of the U.S. dollar because each time they print another one or add another one via keystroke, it is weakening the dollar and eroding the purchasing power of it. Somehow I doubt that Homeland Security's chief, Janet Napolitano, will label Mr. Bernanke a domestic terrorist, though. As for Mr. Nothouse, he faces 15 years in federal prison. Uh, ironically, that is more than bank robbery would have gotten him. And as for us, um, if you own Liberty Dollars, the Secret Service is duty-bound to confiscate them if they see them. So if I were you, I would find a shovel and start digging. This has been an episode of Truth is Treason TV. I'm your host, Kevin Hayden. I'll catch you next time.